Hey guys, what's up? JK with Porn Reboot here. Today I'm going to be talking about a very important topic that is most likely going to be relevant to men who are in their 20s and their 30s and perhaps a handful of men in their 40s and hopefully not their 50s, but that's possible as well. And I'm going to be talking about the life cycle of an unhealthy long-term relationship. Now, I decided to talk about this because a lot of men reach out to me and ask me if it's okay for them to get into a long-term relationship or to get married in order to have sex due to you know, the conservative culture that they're raised in or just because they believe that they have to be in a relationship in order to have sex. Some men also believe it's going to help them quit porn, but it's not. Unfortunately, the pain that I've noticed that comes to these men when they are unprepared to get into relationships is not necessarily from pornography. I'll be talking about that another day. I would like to talk about another sort of pain that many men carry in a traumatic way and I often end up running into men like this and kind of working with them through their pain. The less knowledgeable and experienced you are when it comes to dating women and being in relationships with women, the higher your chance of getting hurt by women. And I'm referring to infidelity here. Now I've spoken to many clients who literally wasted away chunks of their prime years due to the psychological damage that they inflicted on themselves after their girlfriend or their wife or their fiance ended up having sex with another man outside their relationship or ended up dating another man, leaving them for another man. Now this also happened to me and in my case, this mostly happened due to the fact that I gave up my power in the relationship. I allowed the woman in the relationship to have the driver's seat. I became very passive as a result of my addiction, right? Not every man becomes passive, but some of you might. And if you do that on a consistent basis, then some of the things I'm going to talk about in this video may happen to you. So I'm going to be outlining the basic life cycle of most long-term unhealthy relationships in, well, the Western world, but maybe this happens all over the world and hopefully you can learn a few healthier patterns of being in a relationship. Now, in my professional experience, this is the most common cycle and I am painting with very broad strokes here, okay? But I am positive that there are gonna be a bunch of men who can relate to this. Now, this is broken up into stages. So, at each stage, you have the freedom to choose how your relationship is going to proceed. And as a man, I believe that you are responsible for your relationship to a certain extent. And whether it survives or thrives is largely up to you. Now, of course, the, you know, the ultimate prevention to experiencing pain in a relationship is not to let a woman into your life. And I don't think that that makes sense. I do know that there are a lot of men out there who are going their own way or who are black billed or whatever, who feel that there is no hope. But rest assured, there is hope. You just have to learn how to control yourself better and accept the reality of the world. Now, for some of you, this may be a painful video because you might have been through this cycle before and that's okay once bitten twice shy and for others you may recognize one or more of the stages in your current relationship so please if you recognize it don't live in denial okay fix it or get out of the relationship so be aware all right the first stage is when you meet a woman and you guys are going on multiple dates and you're having lots of sex. So, you know, good times. You can't have enough of each other. Your future looks so bright. The sex is awesome. She's fantastic. And you're starting to really justify the time you're spending with her. Maybe you're seeing other women, but she's sexy. She's hot. You like her personality. You can possibly see a future with her. The second stage is when you start living with her, cohabitation, or you start spending a lot of time with her in her place or in your place. You really like her. You know, you both get along really well. You can spend hours together talking about nothing. You know, time flies when you guys are together and she slowly starts leaving her stuff at your place, okay? <laughs> you know, she does this so she can spend more time with you. Eventually, you move in together or you just spend a lot of time in each other's place. The sex is still great and you're still getting to know each other a little bit better. Now, the third stage is when the frequency of the sex you're having reduces. Now, you're not having as much sex, but 
you know, you guys still have strong feelings, you're still connected, you're comfortable in the relationship that you have. But usually at this time, you probably discussed or confronted <laughs> each other on maybe some bad habits or tendencies that you noticed. Maybe you guys have made some concessions and you guys have agreed on some things so that you guys can get along. And even though you're both familiar with each other, you're starting to slowly take yourself for granted. Now, the next stage is where things start falling apart, typically. Again, broad strokes I'm painting with, okay? Usually, your partner asks you for something. It might be more time, it may be money, I don't know how rare that is, but she does this and she compares you, you know, she compares you to another man. Sometimes it's her love language, she wants more time with you, or she wants gifts, or she wants validation, she wants words of affirmation. And then you start worrying that, oh, maybe I can't give her these things, or maybe you don't know how to express that love language as it's called. And this is a very crucial point in a relationship because usually at this point you have two choices. So you either find a way to make this work or you don't. And many men who struggle with pornography are absolutely clueless as to what most women want. Well, most of us are, even if we're not struggling with pornography. The next stage is that she's no longer into sex. You know, she's tired, she's no longer enthusiastic about it, especially if you guys are living together. Sometimes she has a headache, she doesn't want to have sex with you. <laughs> and then the next stage is when you start getting a lot of drama from her. Usually this is in terms of a little bit more complaining, but even though she's complained before, she suddenly becomes intolerant to certain aspects of your lifestyle. And in the past, she used to be fine with these things, okay? It could be anything. It could be your behavior in the bathroom, your habits in the bathroom, your personal hygiene, the hours you work, your beard, your friends, really anything could come up, okay? And then the next stage is usually where she starts reaching out to other men, okay? And sometimes she says that they are just friends. And if you still believe the whole like, oh, she's just friends with that guy then, and he's not gay, then you've got a long way to go, okay? Most women are not going to be in a relationship without prospects. Every woman has a plan B in her mind. It doesn't matter who she is. So for every attractive woman that you date, understand that there are a bunch of men who are waiting on the sidelines who are simply waiting for you to screw up, okay? And many of them are really good at identifying each particular stage in the cycle of your relationship. Again, this is if you're dating a very attractive woman and they're not gonna hesitate to exploit it, okay? Usually your relationship is done at this point, but you can also salvage it. And the eighth stage is when the woman that you're with begins to disappear, okay? So more and more often she's, you know, during key events, you know, of your, both of your lives, like birthdays, for instance, she's no longer there. Many men start rationalizing. Again, I'm talking about unhealthy relationships. And the next stage is where she just starts insulting you, you know? There's humiliation, there's all these personal attacks. Basically, she's trying to push you away. And I'm always surprised at the number of men who will put up with this. And if you're still in a relationship at this point, there is a very high chance that you have some self-esteem issues that might require some serious introspection, okay? Because no person should tolerate that amount of disrespect in a relationship, you know, constantly, every single day. And most men just don't stand up to that because they don't feel like they have any other options. Sometimes this is a point where you might need to take a break from the relationship or really assert your boundaries. And stage 10 is when, unfortunately, you find out that she's been seeing somebody else or she's been having sex with somebody else. And that's usually game over, okay? And many men have been there, some of us one time too many. And a lot of us have never let go of the pain and trauma that this cost us, okay? And in one of my videos, I'm gonna talk about forgiveness and how important that is. But understand that if this cycle and all these different stages that I described, if these are very familiar to you and you're like, dude, I, I go through the same thing, I want you to understand that it's your problem. It is something that you have been doing to yourself and it's very important to learn how to break out of this cycle. Now, I do wanna make it clear that 
I was very hesitant to shoot this video because it's very easy for people to watch it and get the impression that this was my personal experience. I take responsibility in every case, in every relationship that I've ever been in that ended. That's just me, that's what I do. I think it's healthy to do that. And maybe the other person may not have been the most perfect person, but I didn't know better. And sometimes I knew better. <laughs> and I still made that mistake in the relationship. So again, like I said, there's a lot of generalization in here. This is not to categorize men or women in a specific way. They are just a group of men who end up in unhealthy relationships that follow this cycle all the time. The question is, why do you go through that? Why is it that one woman can be in a relationship with you and go through that exact same cycle, but she can end up with another man and live happily ever after. Why does this happen? Now, another question I want you to ask yourself is the role pornography plays in this behavior. So personally, I feel like this was something important to address, and soon I'll be addressing another important thing in relationships, which is the impact that pornography has on your relationship. We can go really deep into that, but for those of you who are single, those of you who are in a relationship like that, specifically men in your 20s and in your 30s who keep playing this game, all right, snap out of it, guys. Snap out of it and ask yourself the important questions. So I'd like to start a discussion in the comment section. I would like to know what some of you guys think about that, how accurate that is. Just curious if you've been through it, share your experience. I'm JK, your brother in this struggle, a little bit of a different video, but thank you for taking the time to watch it and I'll see you in the comment section. Have a wonderful day.